Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Sharon's Home and Garden. Today is the first weekend of the new year and the holidays are over and so I am looking forward to starting my garden. Now I do this in a couple different ways even though there is snow all around me and it's only 10 degrees outside. I start my seeds indoors about this time of the year at least my first batch of seeds anyway. I also do something called winter sowing and I'll be showing you that in a different episode. So join me inside where it's balmy 70 degrees and we will begin my garden through seed starting. Catch you in a minute. So the first thing I do when I'm ready to plant my seeds is I pick the seeds that are going to take the longest to grow first. Um, I've got a couple things in here that I'm going to grow in pots inside and then I've got a, two things that are going to be house plants that I'm growing from seed and then the rest of this is just very slow germinating. It just takes a really long time to grow them from seed couple things I'm trying for the first time to grow from seed and that's a rosemary and oregano. I don't think I've ever tried to grow those from seed. Um, so for instance I'm gonna try to grow this coffee plant and this is supposed to be a really good um, house plant that you can grow inside and eventually you can actually get it to grow coffee seeds. So it takes about three years though. So I'm going to put that in one of these and I got five seeds. Um, this is three to four years to maturity, but we'll see how long it takes for it to sprout. The other one I'm going to try is this purple dragon fruit. This also makes a really nice house plant. Um, I can't grow it outside here. I probably put the plant outside in the summertime. Same with the coffee tree. Um, but we are zone 5A here, which is way too, it's like five zones away from where this, this plant needs to be. Five to seven zones probably. So again, I'm going to grow that in one of these four space ones. I'm, I'm also going to try growing strawberries from seeds. Now these seeds have been stratified and that means that they were in the freezer and you have to keep them in the freezer. Usually it says on the back of here um, how long it needs to be in the freezer. Um, so we'll see what happens. I've uh, had these seeds a while so I've got three of those strawberries, two alpines, and then another one called Temptation. And I'm going to try to have another strawberry patch on the other side of my property. And then in here is lavender. I grew this last year. It was the first time I was successful growing lavender. This takes a really long time to germinate. It takes 15 to 20 days to germinate. And then the plants grow at a snail's place. Pace. So by the time summer comes around here, I can finally get it out in the garden. And I put some in the garden last fall, and we're going to see if they make it through this winter. We've had a really hard, cold winter so far. Another one that I'm trying to grow is rosemary. Have never tried to grow this from seed. 85 days to maturity, it says. Um, we'll see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen. Then here I've got some basils, some parsleys. These I'm just going to keep inside until it gets warm and I'm going to harvest them inside. Thyme. I've got a couple different kinds. Creeping thyme, German thyme. Um, these again are very slow germinating. 
14 to 21 days. So we'll see what happens there. I've got some Italian oregano, more basil. I love basil. And then two celery packs. Um, I was able to grow celery last year. These are red celeries. So I just want to kind of see if I can get them going. And then down here, let's see if I can tip this down. I'm going to grow some um, microgreens. And I've got two different mixes. This is called a kitchen sink mix. And this one is called a healthy blend. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant half this tray now and in 10 days plant the other half of the tray. And then once I harvest this side, I'll be able to replant it and then in a week or so this side will be ready. But microgreens are so expensive, I just decided to try to grow them by myself. They're supposed to be really easy. Um, I've already labeled, I get these little labels in, they're like this, this is what they are. Um, I get these at Menards. They're a really good buy at Menards instead of buying them at uh, my like greenhouse place. They're almost twice as much as the greenhouse place. So I've labeled all these with a name and the date, today's date, that I'm starting all these things. So I'll be babysitting all these plants for a really long time. But in the midst of winter, it's always good to do a little gardening. So let me get set up for the next step and we will start planting. So here I've got, I use a wash basin as my seed start mixer. This is just basic seed starting mix. This is my favorite seed starting mix. Um, and unfortunately, I think that store is only in Wisconsin. But um, when I use that mix versus like a burpee mix, I get twice the germination rates. So if you're getting bad germination rates on your seed starts, it might not be because of what you're doing. It might be because of your seed starter mix. So what I would try doing is try replanting and just grab a different seed starting mix. What I'm going to do is pour boiling water in here. And the reason I use boiling water is because I want to kill any bacteria that's in here. For seed starts, you don't need good bacteria. If you have any kind of little mites or anything, eggs in there, um, this will kill any anything in there. And I've put, before I forget to mention, I put a, one of those flannel line tablecloths I got at a rummage sale for like a dollar on the table because I always end up making a mess. So this needs more water on the floor. And what I'm looking for is to get your seed starting mix to the consistency where if you take up a handful of it and squeeze, it will hold its shape. Now why do this ahead of time? It's because it pre-moistens your seed starting mix, which will allow it to uh, absorb water more easily. So this is about right. Again, I'm making a mess. I can pick this up, it's hot, and it holds its shape. So I'm gonna let this cool down, because if you would plant your seeds in this, you would kill them. So I have to let this cool down to about the temperature of my hand. I'll be back in a few minutes. So I've got almost everything packed and even a few things planted, but I wanted to show you with this last cell how I pack these. So I take my thumb and just push the dirt all the way in just to make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. And then just kind of level it off loosely. 
here. You can see this soil is a little different. The seed starter mix is a little different than what I started with. I ran out of my favorite seed starter mix and I changed to one called Purple Cow. Um, Purple Cow is a pretty good reputation in the gardening world and I'm hoping that it's good. We'll find out. So I'm not going to plant any of my, not going to plant my dragon fruit or my coffee in the purple cow until I know how it performs. So now let's put the seeds in. So I'll just do a real quick demo on how to plant. Um, if you're really interested in learning all the details of planting, my favorite teacher of this is Gary at the Rusted Gardener. Um, he does a really good job of explaining everything. So I just like to mess up the soil a little bit. Strawberries are planted. These are strawberries. This is what I'm planting. Um, and these ones are called pelletized, which means they have this little coating. It's easier to put them in the ground because strawberry seeds are really, really small. Um, and for most of my herbs, what I do is I call, do something called overseeding because the seeds are so small, there's no way you can get like three seeds in a little cell. So I just kind of take a pinch and sprinkle it around and then pat the dirt down and that's fine. But for these, some of the manufacturers make them easier to get. I got these seeds at Farm and Fleet. And you're only supposed to plant these a quarter inch, eighth inch to a quarter inch, which means I'm going to put like three per cell. Come on. And then, or four. These seeds are a little old, so I don't even know if they're going to germinate. We'll see. And then I just kind of cover them up. I don't really even care at this point, some of these. See, when they're pelletized, you can actually see them on the surface if they don't get covered. They'll be fine, don't worry about it. I don't stress over it anymore. Put the label in and then I put them in here. And now we will take them downstairs. One thing I forgot to mention is I like to sprinkle my plants with cinnamon. Cinnamon is an antifungal and if you sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon it will keep the fungus at bay it doesn't hurt the plants makes them smell good I haven't ever really had a plant a problem with um, fungus in my plants but better safe than sorry so I sprinkle them with cinnamon and you put them put a lid over them because you want this nice and moist and then I will put them on the grow mats. So welcome to my grow room. This is a spot down in my basement where I do a lot of my seed starting. Um, when I moved in these shelves were here and then I added these shelves so as my plants grow my seed starting room grows. Now I have the lights on just so it's a little brighter in here. But um, you don't need to have lights on when you're starting. These are my microgreens up here. I didn't put heat mats on these because um, they're a little more like cool crop plants. So they really don't need the heat. But down here, you can see I've got my seeds sitting here and I've got them on heat mats. 
Now the heat mats really do help with germination, makes everything faster. And as you can see, they're already kind of fogging up from the condensation, which is what you want. You want a very damp, humid environment, warm, humid environment for them to grow. So there you go. Thank you for joining me for this quick seed starting tutorial. Again, as I mentioned, if you're really interested in more information about starting seeds at home, very detailed information, check out Gary at the Rusted Garden channel on YouTube. Um, I will not have to keep these lights on until they sprout. Uh, once the seeds sprout, then the lights can come on. Otherwise, you don't have to turn the lights on. So you can save yourself a little bit of electricity. And um, we'll check in with these periodically and see how they're growing. Um, some of these will not be germinating for at least 15 to 20 days. So uh, we don't have to worry about them for a little while. I'll just check them every day to make sure that they have enough water. Thank you so much for joining me on the Sharon's Home and Garden channel. If you like what you saw here, please click on the subscribe button below. If you have a comment or a question, please post it in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer it in a timely manner. Have a wonderful day and always remember, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home.